Now, back when I was an edgy teen atheist, I convinced myself of hard determinism, right? Philosophical hard determinism. So what is that? It's the idea, of course, that, uh, well, the world is, it's all atoms, it's all matter. Therefore, everything within the world is one giant uh, chain reaction. It's a chemical reaction. And it's been kind of set up and it's going in one direction. Okay, we don't know what that direction is. It's hard to tell what the direction is. But ultimately, everything, uh, including the atoms in your brain and therefore you, are all just part of this uh, massive chain reaction. Ultimately, there cannot be anything called free will. We have this illusion of free will, but everything is, you know, it's all kind of predetermined, okay? Now, this is kind of an inevitable, um, I mean, if you believe that there's nothing but matter, right, this is kind of an inevitable conclusion. There are some people out there, uh, some copers who will, you know, claim to be compatibilists and stuff like that. Um, but I, I think, uh, now, of course, there are difficulties in actually, you know, predicting the future because we have uh, constraints on our measurement, like, you know, uncertainty and stuff like that. But um, just in general, like, as to how the universe works, um, if you think it's nothing but matter, it's kind of hard not to believe anything other than, you know, we ultimately don't have control over our own lives. Now, when I was a kid, I thought that was like big and red pilling, right? So normies couldn't handle that truth, right? That you actually, whoa, bro, you actually like don't even really like exist because you don't like actually have a free will over your own life. You're just like a robot, dude. You're just a robot who's like there for the ride. You can perceive what's going on. Like you feel it, but you're not really in control, man. That, I, I thought that was like a Reggie, edgy red pill, Reggie ed pill uh, kind of thing. Um, so, you know, I've come to change my tune for many different reasons. Firstly, of course, you know, um, I think, uh, you know, I don't believe in everything, that everything is uh, atoms and matter and stuff like that in the first place. Um, but I think in reality, looking back at that, I realized that, no, actually, the, the idea that we have no free will, um, that actually is a cope in itself. <laughs> that actually is uh, may, maybe the biggest cope I've ever had. And I can only now look back and realize like how obvious that was because you know the reality is if you if you want to look at yourself as being kind of an automaton that seems dehumanizing but it also justifies your own mediocrity right um because if you can say something like well you know i don't really have free will i don't really have control over my own behavior that obviously makes you in some way uh, irresponsible for your own behavior. It, do, it doesn't actually matter. It doesn't actually, right, if the, the whole world is a giant chemical reaction and you're just there along for the ride and ultimately your will is illusory and you can't control anything, well, that, uh, that very much justifies you just kind of being content to do nothing, right? You, uh, I don't know, not really have anything, not accomplishing anything, uh, not making the hard uh, moral decisions you need to make. Um, now, I was reminded of this recently, um, by someone in real life, uh, I have to highly anonymize this, but I'll just say I had a, I had a buddy, okay? I had a buddy who was having a problem in his life, um, and not exactly his life, but in someone uh, close to him. And, uh, you know, I remember having this talk with him about it. It's like, uh, you know, dude, you gotta get up, you gotta get out in front of this, right? You gotta do something about it. And of course it was a, it was an awkward situation. It's one of those things where like, um, he would have had to make like, uh, he would have to, had to do something like embarrassing and go out of his way to do it to, to solve the problem. But I just remember telling him like, dude, you gotta do something, but you gotta get out in front of it. I don't, listen, I'm not even sure like what you gotta do, but like you, you, do, you do have the ability to solve this problem, right? I'm, I'm highly anonymizing this. It would be actually a juicy thing to talk about, but it's someone in real life. I can't, I can't tell you everything. Either way, I, I just remember him saying something like this that, uh, oh, well, you know, um, uh, well, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I just hope, uh, you know, God, uh, you know, God has like, uh, he's, he's in control of this and I'm just going to leave it in his hands and stuff like that. Now, I, you know, I didn't like explode on him at that point, but I will just say that that is one of the, that, that's a highly irresponsible thing to say. Now his attitude actually would have been highly correct and highly, the, the right attitude to have that level of stoicism would be right in a domain that he had no control over. That actually would be right. Yeah, I don't, I don't have control over it. I'll leave it in God's hands, right? His plans. But, uh, you know, that's just not how God works. Like God, uh, you know, you, like there's a reason that you have moral control over the things close to you. You are responsible for them. And um, 
Like when you have we when you can easily fix a problem where you when you can easily do something about it. Who who are you are you just gonna wait around for like divine intervention? Like who do you, who do you think? I mean, God sends angels to people. God has you as an agent. What you're, you're just gonna use that as an, an a, him existing as an excuse for you not doing anything? That's stupid. It's stupid if you believe in God, and it's stupid if you don't believe in God. Frankly, it's stupid on both on both sides of it because if you have control over something. Um, saying, oh, I'm just going to leave it to fate. I'm going to leave it to God. I'm going to leave it to like whatever. That is just like beyond cope. Okay. That, that ultimately is an excuse for like, not, um, you know, again, like, like we, we have responsibilities in our life. Um, and we, I don't know, we have to be responsible for them. Right. Um, now anyway, all that is to say, if you have this, like, um, I don't know, this, this kind of fatalistic Calvinistic, uh, view of, of, of life. Um, I, it's just not very good. Uh, it's not good because, uh, I was about to spit. Uh, it's just like, I don't like spitting on videos. Um, I, I just breeds a kind of apathy, right? It, it breeds this, um, even if like you might say, oh, well, you know, I believe that uh, humans have like free will in a sense, blah, blah, blah. But uh, uh, there, it breeds this fatality where like you're not in control of your own life and you're constantly like kind of saying, oh, it'll be dealt with later. Like I don't actually actually have to do anything about this. And, uh, you know, I, am, I was very much in this position in my life. In fact, still, I still am. I'm, I'm still trying to, like, exercise the parts of my life where I still think about things like this, this kind of fatality, this kind of, uh, oh, things will deal with themselves. Because the reality is, if you have control over it, like, if you have responsibility over it, like, if, if, you, if you can do something about it, there's no excuse for you not to, right? Now, there are some times where it's important not to intervene in things where you might make things worse, obviously, and you have to have some level of discernment with that, but um, it just really annoys me. Like, fatality really annoys me, um, and of course, it annoys me when I, I have this this sense still, right? Um, because ultimately, right, if, if something is, is in my purview, I am responsible for it. Um, I'm not this kind of person, uh, you know, even when it comes to other people, when they're their decisions, right? Um, you know, if I'm near someone and someone is gonna make like a bad decision, like if I don't speak up, right? Uh, if I don't like make, not even make a fuss, I'm not, a, not actually about like making a fuss about things that other people are primarily responsible for, but um, listen, everything near your life you have a say in. I mean, that, that's all I gotta say. Um, and what, uh, it, it, the thing is, I think a lot of people have this idea, it's not about being a strident person, but oftentimes like having a subtle influence on people around you, not not a strident influence, but just like um, uh, things get easier the more you stand up for yourself, right? I, I did the a video a couple of years ago, right? Uh, when people are talking about like uh, back in the Holocaust and all that kind of stuff where people were having to get shots and do funny things to keep working and stuff like that. And the point I made is like, um, it's, it's not that hard to, A, it's not that hard to like stand up for yourself on something like that. And B, like a lot of times the people who you are afraid of, they're very amenable to your suggestions. Like, and it's actually easier to have an effect on people than you might expect, right? So that, that's one thing that I, uh, and it, like the more you do it, the more, I don't know, the easier it gets, right? So the worst case scenario, like the worst place to be in is when you're constantly just taking life as if it is just like this giant, um, chain reaction, this chemical reaction where stuff is just happening and it just happens to you and you're just waiting for your, your big shot. You're just waiting for your golden opportunity. You're just waiting for this, that, and the other to happen. Um, and no, I mean, that's, that's just not how it happens. Like even like a lot of times, even if you have things easy in life, it's because you've, you've set them up, you've made planning, you've done stuff in, in advance. There've been so many times, um, you know, just when I've done stuff on the internet, uh, I procra I've procrastinated things that I really regretted, and once I finally did them, I'm like, oh, wow, this is actually great, right? Actually, even, like, having my YouTube channel, right? Um, it, it's not too bad having it now, but, like, I remember when I kind of had the idea of having it, I put it off for a good bit, didn't do anything in it, and I realized, actually, it's easier than I expected. I mean, it did require a whole lot of work uh, when I started out um, just to, like, get get to where I was, but like, um, it's one of those things, like, I don't know, you just have a say over your life and you're going to have a different perspective when you realize like how powerful your say is. Um, so anyway, so the whole cope of like fatalism, um, is ultimately, ultimately to rationalize you not doing anything. I think that's really it. Um, uh, and I, I've come to grips with that. I've come to grips that like I was coping that entire time, 
Uh, this, is a, this is not actually a video of me talking about philosophical determinism and why I don't believe in it, but uh, this is really the social, correla co social corollaries. In fact, even if you do believe in hard determinism, even if you believe in fatalism, uh, and you think you're all just, you're, you're just like a robot reacting to, you know, what people do around you. Well, I, I guess, I guess now you have to perceive that I am telling you, you have, have to actually do things and have to actually be responsible. And since you're a robot, you have to do what I say. Um, cause I'll bully you if you don't. Uh, the, the Luke Smith, uh, that exists in your head, he's going to bully you if you don't do the things that you know you need to do, right? Um, so now, now you're actually, you actually have to do these things because if you think of yourself as just an automaton, automatons react to things. So whatever. Anyway, yeah, God has a plan for the universe, uh, but the plan involves you. Okay. Like you exist for a reason, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I, I don't know what people are thinking. Like they're just saying things, they're saying things that make things easy for them. All right. So that's it. That's all I got to say.